Hey YouTube, welcome back to Dark Blue Metals. In today's video, we're going to be modifying the tongue jack on this trailer. Going to be doing some cutting, a little bit of lathe work. Uh, this jack was modified. It originally had a flat foot on it that went all the way up inside the housing. And since the wheel was put on, it's just too long and it doesn't drop down low enough to allow the trailer to be put back on a truck. So we're going to be taking the tongue jack apart. Uh, I'm going to be cutting the Acme screw inside, cutting the housing, cutting the actual telescoping shaft. Uh, it should be a quick job, but I thought it might be something you'd be interested in. Alright YouTube, so here I am ready to take the tongue jack apart. I've got the wheel chalked so the trailer won't slide backwards. The weight of the tongue is resting on a jack stand. And I have just an eggcorn nut and a screw to take this handle off. Normally you'll find these riveted on. Um, I don't know why this is set up like this but uh, usually there's a rivet you would have to drill out. This is really nice because I could just take it apart and I'll reuse the same egg corn nut and screw when I'm done. Would help if I use the right end of the wrench though. Once the handle's off, the telescopic assembly should pop right out. Now you want to be very careful not to lose these bearings. This is what helps the jack turn. Taking the inner tube assembly apart, I've got the caster, the inner tube itself, and the Acme threaded screw. Um, on this, you can see that the top has the crimps, it has the nut for the Acme threads, so I'm not going to touch this end of the tube. This would be a real pain to replicate. On this end, all I have is the cross hole for the casters, which is very, very easy uh, to reproduce. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the Acme screw itself off to the side for now, and I'm going to take a tape measure and I'm going to measure the depth of this caster and the depth is just about an inch and a half so I took four inches off of the tube itself so four inches and we're going to minus an inch and a half which will bring us to two and a half inches that'll be the bottom of this tube So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut that on the chop saw. All right, now that I'm back off the saw, uh, I went around just the top of this with the belt sander. And I'm going to come in here with a half round file just to take off any burr that might be left, make it look nice. I'm going to take my caster, put it back on top of the tube, and I'm going to mark out my hole. All right, you've all seen me drill cross holes, so I'm not going to film that. I'm going to go drill that hole, and I'll be right back. Okay. Let's get this a quick fit up, make sure it lines up right. All right. Perfect. On to the Acme screw. All right, YouTube, I'm at the Atlas lathe. I've got the work mounted in the three-jaw chuck. And this is the portion of the video where I give you one of those little helpful shop tricks that may or may not come in useful for you. When you're turning a shaft, and the shaft I need to replicate is right here. I need to make a two inch long shaft, half inch in diameter at the end of this screw. Now, a lot of people who have lathes will also have a micrometer. You can use this to measure your work dimension and you will keep comparing it to your project and once you, you know, gives you an idea of how far away you are, how much more material you need to hog off before you get to where you're going. Not everyone has a micrometer. And because this is not like an aerospace project or anything really critical, you don't need to be that precise. Uh, another is a pair of dividers. This is another technique. You just put this on your shaft, get your rough dimension, you keep on turning your work down until this will pass over it nice and gently the same way it does here and you have your rough measurements. It's not precise, but it's a lot better than just trying to do it by eye. Well, what happens if you don't have these? This is the trick I want to pass along. In fact, the tool maker showed me this a long time ago and I thought it was really, really cool. 
This is a drill index. Now, this one happens to go all the way up to a half inch. Some drill indexes go bigger, um, but this comes in perfect for exactly what I need. This shaft will fit through the half inch hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna machine this down and I'm gonna keep checking it with the drill index and once it slides through the way it's supposed to, I know I'm at my mark. Is it precise? No, not even close. But it's going to get me in the ballpark I need to be in to reinstall this inside of the housing. I'm gonna take a black Sharpie, I'm gonna take my original piece, and I am nowhere near the chuck. I know the camera angle looks bad, but I am a good two inches away from the chuck. And I'm gonna mark that roughly where I need to stop my cut. All right, let's check our progress. For this trick, please shut the lathe off. Don't try to put this on while the material is still spinning in the lathe. And I've got quite a little ways to go. I'm going to advance the tool, take another pass. And we will see where we are from there. That's pretty good. It'll go through the half inch, but it won't go all the way through the 34 64th. So our work in the lathe is done. All right, YouTube. I went ahead and I drilled the cross hole off camera. Uh, this part of the project is done, and I'm ready to start reassembling the jack itself. Uh, since I handled this quite a bit, and I ended up taking quite a bit of the grease off, I've got some. Uh, Lucas grease, farm equipment, construction equipment, at least that's what the label says. I typically don't like working with schmoo. <laughs> I'm not a mechanic, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be somewhat liberal with this. If you're doing machining on this, you also want to make sure all of the uh, little bits and pieces of metal that come off are not inside the screw. You don't want to have this bind on you. Right. There we go. Give me a second to wipe my hands off here. Now being that this is an Acme thread, when you machine this, uh, the spacing in the threads is such that as you come in with the tool and you're doing your cutting, the threads stay really nice. This should have no problem going back inside of the nut. Okay, there we go. Hardly any effort at all. That's exactly what you want from a good cut. Now, I'm going to take my cordless drill and I'm going to tighten it on the screw and I'm just going to work it back and forth to make sure everything's working all right. Speed things up a bit here. All right. That feels really good. Time to go put this puppy back on the trailer. All right, YouTube, ready to reassemble the jack. Got my bearings on. I'm going to insert this in the external tube like so. Sometimes lining up the holes is a little interesting. There we go. And handle. Screw. Once again, it would help if I used the right end of the wrench.
Now, you may notice something interesting here. The whole shaft spins. I expected this. The reason for that is at the bottom of the original tube, there's a stopper that travels along this track that prevents that from spinning. So let me show you how we're gonna fix that problem. So here's how we're gonna fix that problem. Step one, I'm gonna drill two holes. Hole size really doesn't matter too terribly much. You know what, I'm gonna go get a sharp drill bit. All right, two holes. Step two, find yourself a pin that will fit between the outside of the housing and the shaft. You're gonna just take it and slide it right into place, like so. Step three, attach a ground clamp. Step four, plug weld that damn thing. Check the function of the jack. Look, it works. Next, reattach wheel, deliver trailer. All right, there you have it, YouTube. That was my first project of the day. Uh, I've got some more to do. Need to get in out of the rain. I'm gonna drop the trailer off and then get back to work. Thank you once again for stopping by the channel, hanging out with me. Hope you learned something, maybe picked up a trick or two. Uh, before I end the video, I also wanna thank two of my friends, Ed and Mike. Uh, Ed got me a gift card for Amazon. I was able to get some cool stuff for the shop. And Mike decided he was gonna go out and get me a couple of t-shirts. This is one of them. Eat, sleep, weld, love it. Thanks guys, means a lot. Uh, <laughs> Next video should be coming out soon, but for now, I gotta get out of the rain. This has been Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. I'll see you again soon.